This is Andy Two, and this is the uh, Spartan Model 327K sewing machine. It was made in Kilbowie, Clydebank, Scotland between 1963 and 1965, according to Singer, and it was made by the Singer Manufacturing uh, Company. And Singer also had a Singer badged uh, Model 327K. And this Spartan would be considered the economy model of the 327. And I was able, I don't have a, a Singer brand, uh, badged 327, uh, but I was able to get uh, documents and uh, the instruction manuals and the parts list and so forth on these. And I can show some of the differences between the two. Uh, starting with, there's no light switch on the Spartan. Uh, when you plug it in, the light comes on and the motor can work. The, the pressure knob up here, the adjustment knob for the presser bar is uh, what's called blackened or black side. It is not chromed and most of the screws on the machine are blackened and not chromed. The width lever here in the front is black, not chromed. And uh, the stitch length knob lever here in the knob on the front, that's also blackened or black side, take your, take your preference. Uh, on the back here, the very common stop motion knob is uh, not chrome, it's a blackened. And the uh, nose plate has a thumb screw for access and it's blackened. And the presser foot thumb screw is blackened as well as the presser foot itself is uh, blackened. And that, that's the first one I remember seeing like that. Um, when we come to the front, the the little knurled knob on the on the standard tension unit here is blackened instead of chromed, and the indicator dials are um, kind of a brown or tannish color. Um, so those are those are some differences between this this the Singer badged one that I could see these indicator dials would usually match some of the colors on the machine um, the levers, knobs, screws uh, many of them would be chromed the stop motion knob in the back would be chromed so this version the, the, the Spartan would be considered like the no frills to go along with the word Spartan right uh, the no thrills version of a Singer badged 327K. But it's less expensive, but it's certainly not less capable or powerful. Now think of this as function over form. It costs less for the customer, but it performed the same. And um, from reading blogs and reviews and stuff, some people don't express that, but I, f I feel strongly that way, that it's mechanically the same and will perform the same um, as the Singer badged one. Um, as an example, the Spartan has the same internal open chassis motor mounted in the upright that the Singer badged one has um, with a motor speed of up to 1100 RPM and the parts diagrams for all these machines show the same part numbers for the uh, horizontal arm shaft and the vertical uh, arm shaft the, the gears up here mm, 
the, the whole feed drive and hook system, uh, needle and presser bar, and even the bushings are all the same part numbers. Uh, the hand wheel and the counterweight at the needle bar end and the hand wheel end all show the same part uh, number, as well as the wiring and the light, except for this uh, uh, on-off switch that the Singer Batch one has. Um, it's got a little push button chrome uh, thing right about up in here somewhere. Um, now I'm not sure about the foot controller. This is the foot controller that came with mine. And frankly I was surprised that it the, the, the color matched the cord and body but the what I call the gas pedal <laughs> um, has been chromed. And that kind of surprised me a little bit. But from trying to look at uh, pictures online and in the uh, instruction manuals and in the parts list, the, the only parts documents I could find for the motor and the foot pedal, the foot pedal was a button style. But in different pictures uh, I found on Google Images, I, I have uh, foot pedals like this and I have button style foot pedals and I even saw some with clamshell style foot pedals so I'm not I'm not sure what's up with that and since I don't have uh, a 327 singer badged um, I really I can't attest to that now um, this 327k Spartan I found was not the first Spartan made and I didn't think so because I had seen some, uh, like what I call black painted uh, singers that said Spartan. So a little research came up that from 1959 to 1961, Singer did make a Model 192 Spartan. Uh, it was black. It had no uh, decaling of any kind. Uh, did not have a light. Um, they did not make a case for it. The base here was a black bake light type of plastic case, and it was basically an economy version of the 99K. So, those are most of the differences, anyway, that I could find between these two versions of the 327K. Um, Another one is this indicator plate here. It's very plain. It just has some uh, horizontal lines here where the pictures I saw of the badged singer had the red S symbol here, the different uh, indicator plate. And of course it had, uh, you know, the name singer up here and it had a colored indicator dials instead of this brown and chrome pieces and so forth. But they all uh, use this cast aluminum body and the bed length from end to end is 16 and a half inches and um, it's 8 inches deep and the uh, the workspace here are what we call the harp this this area like this from the top of the bed to the bottom of the arm up here is four and a half inches and from the needle to the upright is about seven and a quarter so that's a very good size uh, work area or harp they call and uh, I already mentioned the SNK2 interior interior motor that they all had and that K in the SNK uh, signifies the motor was also made in Kilboe, Scotland. They all use a Samanco Singer Manufacturing Company uh, motor belt number 193077. And uh, they all have an oscillating hook system, a horizontal oscillating hook with 
a front drop oops, front drop in bobbin it takes a class 66 bobbin and it has a movable um, uh, bobbin positioning bracket and spring that's adjustable but the the all metal bobbin case stays stationary it does not move like like some of the hooks and bobbin cases that are down below here and this was uh, during the time like like you'll see the the hmm, slantomatics and rocketeers and uh, if you've seen some of the 400 plus videos on my channel you see I've done a lot of machines like this with a, a, a front drop in uh, bobbin class 66 the difference between some of these is this is an oscillating hook meaning like the uh, slantomatic or rocketeer it does not rotate around it oscillates back and forth um, it'll go up and grab the thread and oscillate down to the release point for the thread to let the needle thread go and then it'll oscillate back up go past the needle and on the way back down grab the thread so that's what they mean by uh, oscillating it just back and forth and it has a bell crank type a rod system that that moves that it doesn't have a gear in, down below and they don't have any um, mm, like timing belt down below which I'll be doing a series on this 192 and if you're interested you can you can see all those mechanical parts and so forth uh, it has a clamping what's called a clamping style uh, needle plate which instead of being screwed down it has a spring-loaded clamp post on the left and, and a pin on the right, positioning pin, and you just lift it up like so and pull it off. And you can change plates. It came with a, a you know, straight stitch plate with a little hole, and this is the multi-purpose or zigzag plate. And uh, that also allows you easier removal of the bobbin case and to get in and clean the linting and so forth dust out of the area and then to put it back you put it back in usually the spring is going to just push it down but on this it's pretty dirty I haven't done anything with the machine yet um, so that's kind of the mm, mm, bobbin area the um, they all take a, a 2020 catalog needle, catalog 2020 Singer needle, which nowadays we call the 15x1 needle system. And um, the slide lever, uh, oops, there was the needle I was supposed to be pointing at when I told you the 15x1 needle. <laughs> And it threads from the front to the back. Mm. They have a, uh, a slide width system. When you're all the way left, if you hear that click, that's zero setting. And it has little arrows pointing up and down, which means that's your straight stitch position. And if you come off the zero, now you're getting into width zigzag stitching. And you can go all the way to the indicator 4 on the dial, which is um, about 4.2 millimeter, uh, about 4 millimeter, 5 and 3, 5 and 5 30 seconds of an inch wide or about 4 millimeter wide. And the stitch length control is like many that we've seen on singer models of these a decade in here through the 50s and 60s and where the down is the longest stitch about six per inch uh, about 4.2 and as you move up you get into the area of 8 10 12 15 20 
uh, there's a fine area up here uh, between 20 and 30 that you can dial in for satin stitching like embroidery or buttonhole and if you go all the way up that puts the feed in reverse so you can sew in reverse and like most of the others you can lock in a stitch length see there's 12 just by turning this knob to the right to to get uh, these pins up against the indicator plate so if you throw it in reverse and you want to come right back to your same length like you go to the end of the seam and back it will that's what's called locking in it won't go below or, or above that um, the let's see if we can turn this around here the the bobbin winder system up here mounts up at the top of the casting just under the cover of the arm system and the, the arm itself is a manual it has no auto fill um, you, you, you put the bobbin on here and when you push it down it goes against the hand wheel to turn the bobbin winder tire or friction ring and you you manually fill it you know you watch and when you have as much thread on your bobbin as you want then you push it up okay and it basically on these 327 K Spartan the the thread goes from your spool pin to a thread guide at the top of the arm and then cuts across the front of the machine to the right bottom where there is a tensioner hook and then the thread goes up to the bobbin winder spindle and just like most of the singers you've seen of this age if you turn the stop motion knob left or counterclockwise it disengages the mechanics of the rest of the sewing machine and only allows the hand wheel to spin from the motor belt so you would disengage that and push your tire down against the wheel and wind the bobbin without the needle needle bar or feet or anything else working. When you were finished with the bobbin, you pull it up, you turn the uh, motion knob back to the right or clockwise, and that re-engages the uh, oops the uh, washer there the, the clutch washer so now that the motor will turn the shafts the hand wheel and the feed and, and everything like that that's real real common that you see that right now um, the nose end the top arm we, we will say the end the hand wheel end or the motor cover and the bottom cover they have covers you can remove those four covers and you get access inside the machine to to delint to lubricate with oil and grease in a couple places and the bottom and so forth uh, so you can lubricate and clean and do any maintenance that's required on the machine and that's also very common now during this same time period um, records indicate that Singer um, also made a model 328 K style mate and this was the top of the line of the 320 series the 328 K uh, was all the, the badge Singer up on the top of the arm it had a flip up lid where you could get access to the camshaft and there was a big chrome knurled knob there you took off and you could take out a pattern cam like the zigzag and replace it with say a blind hem uh, screw it back down in place and then you could sew the blind hem pattern 
and these uses use the original type A flat black Bakelite plastic patterns and uh, the flat ones there was about 30 of those patterns and um, that machine could also double needle so where the 327 is a single needle and Singer made this 328k style omatic as um, kind of like a less expensive but similar featured machine to their flagship 401A and 401G models. Uh, for people who couldn't afford that, a 328k style mate with, with this changeable pattern cam system cost about 40% less than a 401. And Singer also made 328K, no, 328J model in Canada that was the same, maybe some different paint colors. And they made um, a 328P in Australia. Okay. And then, um, matter of fact, I think, I think I've got some pictures of those. Let me show you pictures of the 328K. Now, the, the original, the first one, the early model, was a beige. It looked more like the, the Slantomatics. And then the, the next version that came out the next year was a different uh, arm cover and, and system here. Uh, and by the way, the 328 also had needle positioning, left, center, right. But let me show you those uh, slides that I found. So also at this time, and actually for one year longer, the Kilboy plant in Scotland made a 329K model, which was straight stitch only, and the lowest cost of the line. Now the 328 and 329 versions, maybe, I don't know if you can see, there's a little... Uh, Let's see if I can get over here. There's a little spool pin hole right here. And the 328 and 329 came with a spool pin. And instead of this uh, tensioner hook, there was actually a tension disc, a spring-loaded tension disc. So you could just put your spool of thread here and go through the tension disc and go on up to the bobbin winder. Uh, and, and without disturbing your needle thread and so forth. And the 329, like I said, was only um, a straight stitch machine and it was only made in Scotland. But um, it, it's funny to me about the straight stitch models at this time, like the, the 329. Oh, let me show you a picture. I think I have a picture of the 329 straight stitch only. You won't see any zigzag here. Um, so what I'm saying, it seems funny to me, like the 329 and 404, they're very underappreciated. They were not popular. Uh, critics and collectors kind of snubbed them over time. And I'm guessing it was just because of the huge increase in knit fabrics that came out after World War II and then into the 60s and, and even 70s. Um, and, and the zigzag feature. But I, I say f funny meaning humorous to me because the straight stitch models from those days like the 221 Featherweight and the 301 Slant Needle are two of the most expensive 
vintage machines you can buy these days and they're always in high demand and they demand a good price uh, as well as the much beloved Rolls Royce of Singer straight stitch machines the model 201 now all these uh, machines the 327 8 and 9 they came with a what we call hardwired motor where the the line cord and the foot controller cord go into a little splicing area and wires from the motor and light come in there and they're all hard spliced together there's no plug uh, you, you know you can't unplug it except from the wall you can't unplug the foot pedal or anything at the machine and as far as I can tell they all came with some type of carbon stack resistor foot controllers and one last little humorous thing to me was I looked at the uh, serial number on this 327k Spartan and when when Singer said that they made the 327k model from 1963 to 1965 maybe that's mean means when it was sold because the the serial number on this machine is ET Edward Tom 194290 and when I looked that up on their hmm, on their serial number list it said that in January of 1962 50,000 328 K's were ordered from the factory <laughs> so go figure <laughs> my serial number says 328 K but the machines 327 K and uh, that also convinces me that m the mechanics and everything are the same even the body down to this I wonder if there's any Spartans without this um, spool pinhole but it was just humorous to me when I saw that but I'm going to be doing a series for this Spartan um, you know getting into the insides and showing that and explaining that and how the light works and so forth and I've got some work to do here it's very dirty and it's very stiff to turn it doesn't turn very freely it, it feels like the motor belts way too tight but I checked it and it's actually adjusted properly and I put a, a lot of oil and stuff on it, but it seems very, uh, that's as fast as I can get it to run, which is probably just uh, needing adjustment in the foot controller. But even turning it by hand is stiff. And when I, when I uh, release the, the stop motion, it's still pretty stiff to turn. That's so why I took a look at the at the motor belt. I thought, wow, somebody put this motor belt on way too tight or the wrong one. But it's the proper belt and it's uh, got the right play in it and stuff. So I don't know what's going on. But we'll find out if you're interested in the 327K model, whether it's uh, badged as a Spartan or a Singer. Come back and join me when you have time. I'd love to see you there. In the meantime, uh, take care, and thanks for watching.